Here we are then, the first save of FM23 with my team Southampton. We have finally got rid of Ralph Hasnertal. I have taken charge and I will lead us to probably mid-table mediocrity. Unlike a lot of videos that you'll probably see over the next couple of days, I'm not going to go in depth into all the new features. I might skim over them as I come across them, but for the most part, we're just doing a let's play. So immediately we take a look then at the best 11 and... I'd kind of have to agree the only thing potentially obviously real life and in-game stats are probably slightly different. Diallo maybe not as good as Lavia. Otherwise, I'd say this isn't too dissimilar to what you'd expect. Livermento maybe over Walker Peters, but obviously he currently has his injury as well. What do the board want us to do then? They do not want us to sign old players and by old I mean over the age of 28, which is perfectly fine because I'm not planning on doing that anyway. High tempo pressing football, fair enough. Using the youth system, I will try and do that, but this is probably only going to be about three seasons long, this save, so not sure how many players we're going to get through the youth intakes. We are also looking for under-23s for the first team and under-19s for the future. This one's a bit of a worry. Sign players to sell for a profit. It's accurate, but I don't really want to do it. And the supporters then, they want us to play youth players. They want us to play entertaining and attacking football. That shouldn't be too much of a problem. They want us to stay in the Premier League, beat Portsmouth and beat Bournemouth, or finish ahead of Bournemouth. If we get the chance to beat Bo or play against Portsmouth, obviously, we're not going to play them anytime soon. So I think from a tactics perspective, I am by no means a tactical expert. In fact, I don't know tactics at all. We're going to go for the 4-3-3 Gegenpress straight out of the box. I, I, we need to play Gegenpress, basically. They want us to play pressing football, attacking football, things like that. You kind of have to play Gegenpress. This is what I'm going to go with, partially because I think it sort of matches what Southampton normally play. We seem to play sort of three central midfielders at the moment. You've got one who is normally, I think, against Bournemouth recently. It was Maitland-Niles, who's kind of the the deeper player. He was kind of doing a lot more of the running. You had uh, El Yanusi, I think it was, and James ward Prowls sort of in the middle. So we do have, we kind of have three midfielders, arguably. It's kind of more like that, isn't it? We've got like this weird line of footballers uh, that we seem to play. Him. Like Joe Aribo might be the one sat in there. I've also just changed that role. What was it? It was Carolero. We're going to go for a Carolero. So that's what we're going to go for. I think we've got the players to fit into this. But the reason why I wanted to put a formation in is so we can have a look at the squad planner. Now, I know I said I wasn't going to go into taking a look at every single new feature. But this one really does interest me. This is the one that I think I'm going to get the most use out of. Because I never planned for the future. And now we can. So skimming through the positions, left wing, we've got a lot of players who are capable of playing there. Not many who are actually good. And by good, I mean not many who are three and a half star. Adam Armstrong and El Yanusi are our two best left wingers, which I'd argue they're not the greatest. On the right hand side, we've got Armstrong and Aribo, who Armstrong, I think three star is a bit harsh for Armstrong. He's a very good footballer. Joe Aribo, I'm probably going to use him more as a box to box midfielder, which he can't do. Ward Prowse can do that. Ward Prowse can do that. Ward Prowse can do all of those. Um, basically, what I'm trying to say is we need to kind of start planning for what positions we need, what we uh, potentially don't need. I don't think we need a striker because we've got Adams, we've got Mara, and I think in two seasons' time, Mara will be better than Shea Adams. So that's quite good to see. And financially, we've got £20 million to spend. I don't know who to buy. Now, I would argue that we potentially need to bring in another goalkeeper, which is strange because Gavin Bazunu should be our number one goalkeeper, but he's only two and a half star current ability. Although, do we risk playing Gavin? I think we're probably going to risk playing him. I think potentially a central midfielder, maybe somebody like a box to box, uh, because you can see our three central midfielders is Warprows, Diallo and Lavia, and they fit all three positions. So if we were to drop them off Maitland-Niles, we've got Maitland-Niles actually isn't a terrible option. Can play in a few of those roles. A rebo as well isn't a terrible option. And that's it. So maybe we need to bring in another midfielder, potentially a defensive midfielder, to be sort of fighting for Diallo. Maybe that's what we need to look at. So I've just set up three uh, recruitment focuses. Basically, we're looking to bring in a DLP, a left winger, and a striker. The striker, I'm saying, bring one in on loan. Basically, he's going to come in kind of as another option similar to what Broja was last season. So hopefully we can have somebody potentially young who can come off the bench, maybe do something. I was trying to sign Graziano Pella back to the club. Um, he, he didn't accept my contract. Apparently 10 grand a week isn't enough money for a 37-year-old. We've gone forward a few more days. It's now mid-July and we have some transfer business to talk about. Two players leaving the club. First of all, Theo Walcott has left 
moving across the border and then on another boat to the island where Ajaccio is. He is signed for the French team for not a lot, 400, 300,000 pounds. I think we're also paying some of his wages as well. Al Yanusi, however, has gone and got on a plane and flown all the way to Mexico, I believe. And he's gone for a fair amount of money, 8.25 million pounds for a player who I don't think he's that good. And joining the club then, we've signed a 32-year-old Finnish striker called Timo Puki because he, he knows goals. He knows goals. And if there's a problem that Saints have and in real life at the moment, is scoring goals. Timo Puki should be able to solve that problem. He's 32. It's fine. It's only a game. We've also spent £15 million on Frank Onyeka from Brentford, who I think this is actually a pretty good signing. He's come in as a squad player. 15 is reasonably cheap, I think, in nowadays money. It's, it's hurting my brain to spend that amount of money on a backup player. But Frank Onyek has come in and I think I think we've got ourselves some very good defensive midfielders now. He can also play, obviously, as central midfield as well. I think our midfield sorted. We just need a left winger. And I've been trying to get them to find me a left winger. And they searched and they found literally nobody. Nobody at all. So I'm wondering whether we change it to just that and that. I mean, I've said any role. Just do that. Can I restart? Is that going to restart it? Okay, so it's there immediately. And all of a sudden, we've got lots of people that they found. Um, I'm not quite sure how they've managed to do this. So I'm going to take a look at some of these players and see who is of interest to me. Pion Sisto for £120,000. Sounds very promising. Ita Olienka as well. I mean, that's cheap. I'm putting in bids for players that I really should not be bidding for. A week later, and two more bits of business have now been completed. Pion Sisto is the first one to join. He's cost £3 million, which is probably more money than he perhaps should have cost, but he's a very good player, in my opinion. He's, is he is he good? I don't know. We'll find out. And if he isn't any good, Peter Olienka is going to be there trying to basically steal that position away from him as well. He has come in for £4.9 million, potentially rising up to a massive £5 million. That £100,000 that we refuse to pay them, they're going to get that at some point. And I think realistically, that's probably our business, isn't it? We've done a lot. We've spent 102 million in theory when you include all of the other transfers that have gone through. When you've got the Bazunus, the Lavias, the Chaleta Sars, I think that's how it's pronounced. Adozi, Mara, Aribo, Bella Kotchap, Larios, all costing a fair amount of money. And then me coming in with my uh, big money signings of Onyeka, Puki, Sisto, and Olienka. We're going to go forward now to the first game of the season, which is Newcastle. Great, they're definitely not going to have spent a lot of money. So it is now the day of the Newcastle game, and I completely skipped past this piece of news, but this is definitely new, and I think this is quite interesting. Board expectations, they expect us to draw, and Rasmus Ankerson is eager to see pressing football style being played. Fair enough, the fans... We are at St. James's Park, so they've travelled a very, very long way to get to watch this game. Emmanuel Stewart, the supporter spokesman, has said, anticipating being spoiled by some exciting attacking football, looking forward to witnessing plenty of entertaining football and hoping to see Frank Onyeka make his debut. Well, Emmanuel, that might happen. I don't know. So I mentioned earlier on in the video that this is the formation we are going to go for. I've set up two more, and by set up, I've literally just taken them out of the box. We've got a 5-2-3 wing play, which seems to have seven defensive players and three attacking players, which I weirdly quite like. And then we've got the same formation, but on a direct counter-attack. I'm thinking we are going to go for this one. So this is what we're going to go for our first starting lineup. then. It's going to be Bazzuna in goal, Bella Kotchap, Lianco and Chaleta Saar as our defence. It's going to be Walker, Peters, Diallo, Ward, Prowse and Perro as our defensive midfield wing-backs. I don't really know what to call that. Because I'd expect those two to be slightly further up the pitch, but they're not anyway. Armstrong and Oli Inka will be our wingers with Shea Adams leading line. Stuart Armstrong, by the way. Subs bench, you can see there. We've, it's a pretty decent, pretty strong subs bench. Timo Puki might be making his debut today. We also need to make sure Frank Onyeka comes on the pitch as well to make sure Emmanuel's happy. I have actually not played a match in this football manager. All of the preseason have been done through the assistant manager so this is going to be a, a bit of a baptism of fire, I think. I imagine I probably need to make sure that we're showing the right highlights and all sorts of stuff. This doesn't seem to have changed because we're in the Premier League. If we were in the Championship, I think we'd see something a little bit different. That formation is throwing me. I'm not sure I'm keen on that. So here we go then. We do have a highlight to kick off the game, but I think this is just literally the kickoff. And we are, I mean, it's definitely near their goal. It's nothing's going to happen. Though. So 10 minutes into the game, then we technically haven't had a highlight until now. St. Maximin's corner towards Lascelles. 
and Alexander Isak makes it 1-0 to Newcastle. It's not been the most exciting game of football. That's literally the first shot and it's gone in. This is going to be like real life Southampton, isn't it? Admittedly, I am playing a strange formation. Maybe I need to try something a little bit differently. I wanted to play this because it makes use of having a lot of very good central defenders. Belakot, Chaplianko, Tilata Saar. We've also got Salis, who's currently out injured, annoyingly. But yeah, I mean, maybe it's not working for this match in particular. Or maybe it just doesn't work at all. So Maxman with the ball for Newcastle. It's Guimaraes, goes for a long-range effort, tucks it underneath the goalkeeper, it's 2-0. I think my highlights are a bit too quick as well. Couldn't quite see what was going on there. Straight after the goal, we have another highlight. And are we playing badly or are Newcastle playing well? I'm not quite sure. Oli Inca down the line straight to Miguel Almiron, who's going to go for a run forward. Lumps it towards St. Maximin, who's not going to get there instead. Bella Kotchap collects it and just gives it to St. Maximin anyway and then steals it back. He's just stat padding now. Is that what he's doing? He just wants to get his tackles up. Joel Linton with the ball. Ward Prowse steals it, passes it to Matt Target. He doesn't play for you anymore, guys. Almiron's going to get there first. Isak's there. And a flag goes up. It should potentially be 3-0. It might still be 3-0. We're going to get VAR. Oh, that's a fancy new graphic. I mean, it's still VAR and it's still disallowed. Right, we're definitely playing badly. We are definitely playing badly. Looking at the match ratings. Perro, Olienka, Armstrong, Adams, Lianko all playing very badly on 6-4s or 6-5s. Lianko's dropped to a 6-3 now. Bella Kotchap, however, is on a 7. Just before half-time, can we get back into this game? We've literally not had the ball in their half in any highlight, have we? We've not had the ball in their half in any highlight. Miguel Almiron's going to go for a run. Gets past many, many blue shirts into the penalty area. Crosses it in. It's over the bar. It's going to go off for a goal kick. And it is going to be 2-0 to Newcastle at half-time. They are good at football, though, aren't they? I'm going to thrash arms. You've been terrible. There we go. Most people seem to take that on board, apart from Stuart Armstrong. We're going to change up to this formation and rearrange everybody to see what we can get to work. All we really need to do is that. So, Lianko's coming off. Maitland-Niles is going to come on in that Carolero position. Diallo drops to the DLP. Everything else is going to stay the same, which could be a risk. I mean, this might suddenly work and we might be the best team in the world. Five minutes into the second half and we've got the ball and we're coming forward slowly. Olienka with it, loses out to Miguel Almiron. What? Is he the best footballer in the world or something? Is Did I not get the memo? Trippier across to Guimaraes, in towards Joel Linton, gets their first, tries to curl it past Bazunu, heats it just wide. Newcastle are very good, aren't they? Southampton are also very bad. Shea Adams is on a 6.2. Right, so Timo Puki is coming on. We're going to see him making his debut. We're also going to do Frank Onyeka coming on for Diallo. And we'll do that. Sure, I guess that works. I've also just told them to shoot on sight because we've had two shots. So, you know, I want to just see some highlights going our way. Willock's going to get there first. No, he doesn't. Oli Inka heads forward. Timo Puki, the old man of the side. Probably one of the oldest players I will ever sign in this football manager as well. Perot collects it for us. Back to Ward Prowse, playing in the much deeper role now. Bella Kotchap. He's so far one of the few players who's doing all right on a 6.8. And it's still not that great, is it? Armstrong's not going to get there first. And Newcastle now can build something. Sven Botman has it. Matt Target on the left. We need to seal this. We do. Walker Peters to Bella Kotchap. It's hyphenated FC. Maitland-Niles is another one. Ball forward. Pookie can't run, can he? What are we trying to do that for? Maitland-Niles collects that, though. Down the right. Are we going to get ourselves a goal? No. What was that pass? Maybe. Timu's there. Timu Pookie scores. We've made it 2-1. Timu Pookie scored on his debut. It was somewhat shambolic by Newcastle. Their defence there. But I don't care. I'll take it. Now to get two more. Or maybe one more. And then we can get a draw. And that's what everybody wanted. The board wanted that. The fans wanted that. That'll do. It's a corner for Newcastle, 20 minutes to play. Guimaraes doesn't get there. Almiron collects it, edge of the area. Curling effort goes over the bar. Still 2-1 to Newcastle. They've looked very good. They've looked very comfortable. We can do more subs, right? We're allowed to. So we're going to do Adam Armstrong for Oli Inca. And I assume if we want to do a fifth sub, we have to do it now. And we have no centre-backs. Perro's coming off for Juan Larios. And that is going to probably be all of our subs. Good news for us. Ryan Fraser's just come on for Miguel Almiron. And Almiron... Despite the fact he's on a 6.6, seem to be doing most of the football for them. One minute and 20 seconds left to play of injury time. We've got the ball. We need to get it forward. Onyeka to Adam Armstrong. Controls it well. Lumps it off towards Stuart Armstrong. Doesn't get there, though. Target finds St. Maximin, and now Newcastle can possibly counter forward. Isak plays it on the ground, finds Ryan Fraser. He's running towards goal. He's chipped it over. Why did Bella Kotchap not go for that? Ryan Fraser's just scored a goal, 
by chipping it over Bazunu. Berlakotsap could have got that, and he didn't bother. So watch, watch him. Watch him there. Okay, Berlakotsap just decides, nah, not bothering. Not bothering with that. Could have made that. Walker Peters could have made that. Larios probably could have made that. Why did we not stop that? Well, full time then in our first game in charge of Southampton. And we've lost 3-1 against Newcastle. And I'm not happy. I'm not happy with the performance. We did not play very well at all. Bazunu. Gavin. Buddy. That was horrendous. A 6-1. So then the first match has been played. And the first defeat is on the board. We are not expected to do particularly well this season. We're expected to finish 16th place in the table. So, hear me out. That's not a terrible result. Losing against Newcastle, a team who clearly invested a lot of money. Have they invested even more money? Have they bought anybody new since the start of the save? I don't think they have, actually. They've spent £118 million. We've spent 100 and something as well. Ignore that. Ignore that. And let's be honest, there wasn't particularly anything in that match that made me think, you know what? We'll be all right. We weren't very good. Our goal was lucky. Bazunu was horrific. He was absolutely horrific. Maybe we do need to look at bringing in a short-term goalkeeper for a season. On loan, maybe. And then next year, Bazunu can be our number one. Because, let's face it, if he plays like that every single game, we aren't going to be the manager for much longer. That is going to do it then for episode one of our beta save with Southampton. Thank you very much for watching. If you've made it all this way, thank you very much. Do please remember to leave a like on the video. It helps me out massively. If you want to see more of the Southampton save, hit the subscribe button. If you want to see more of what I'm going to be doing in FM23, hit the subscribe button. We're talking building a nation save. Not quite sure what nation we're going to do just yet, but that is going to be a thing that's going to take place. I've potentially got nine other saves planned. It's a lot of saves. I'm not committing to all of them, but there is potentially a lot of different Let's Plays going to be taking place throughout the course of FM23 on this channel. So yeah, if you want to see them, hit the subscribe button. Thank you very much for watching. I'll be back next time with more Southampton and maybe we might win a game. We might do Brentford-Bournemouth. We can win both of them. Thanks for watching.